All right, I think we're live. I'm calling to order the regular board meeting of Tuesday, August 16th, first of the year. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, student trustee Unelli Garcia Bustamante. Here. Student trustee Allison Dana. Here. Trustee Melissa Boyd. Awful names tonight, here. Oh yeah, it's the first one. <laughs> Trustee uh, Veronica Davidson. Here. Trustee Brian Doss. Here. Vice President Clementina Duron. Here. President Sarah Hinckley. Here. Superintendent Dr. Frank Wells. Here. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, I will now recite the Pledge of Allegiance for those who would like to join in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have uh, our new and returning student board members read our mission and vision statement, please? Yep. Um, the mission of Albany Unified School District is to provide excellent public education that empowers all to achieve their fullest potential as productive citizens. AOSD is committed to creating comprehensive learning opportunities in a safe, supportive, and collaborative environment addressing the individual needs of each student. Meeting norms. Maintain a focus on what is best for our students. Ensure a safe environment for all views to be expressed treating each other, staff, and the public respectfully. Endeavor to find common solutions to issues through collaboration without sacrificing one's belief in what is best for students. Make a commitment to effective deliberation, each one listening with an open mind while others are allowed to express their own points of view, even if one disagrees. Great, thank you. There was no action taken tonight in closed session. We have a relatively short agenda tonight. Um, I will take a motion to approve it. And move that we approve tonight's agenda. I'll second that. Okay, student Trustee Garcia Bustamante. Yes. Uh, student Trustee Dana. Yes. Trustee Boyd. Yes. Trustee Davidson? Yes. Trustee Doss? Uh, yes, sorry. That's okay, thank you. Vice President Duran? Yes. President Hinckley? Yes. The agenda is approved unanimously and I will now uh, ask for questions or a motion to approve the consent calendar. Are you trying to raise your hand, Vice President Duran? <laughs> yes, yeah. go ahead. I, I'm not used to the smaller um, uh, computer I'm working with, but anyway, thank you for, I'll just keep jumping up and down like that. Um, I wanted to see on item um, 6H, the uh, money for the Cornell furniture. I had asked a question earlier today regarding a, the equivalency for Ocean View and Marin. Uh, what we had um, spent there. And at the time, uh, it wasn't sure. So I'm just hoping that uh, the superintendent would be able to get back to the board about because the idea was is that, you know, we wanted some uh, we wanted things to be fair there in terms of what was already spent at the other two sites and providing new furniture with Cornell, we wanted to spend pretty much the same amount. So um, just hopefully we can get that information maybe on a Friday update, Superintendent? I'm duly noted, thank you, um, Vice President Dora. I'm duly noted for um, a Friday update. But I can tell you, since you asked the question here, um, that it was based on um, needs of each site, but um, we have the details um, for you in a Friday update. Trustee Doss? Uh, yes, uh, and I apologize to the community. I'm transitioning um, and I'll, Turn my camera on so you all can see my wonderful face in a few moments. Uh, so my apologies there. 
Uh, but I would like to remove, um, I don't have the, the number right in front of me, but it is the part of the consent calendar that is uh, associated with the um, changing of the uh, principal and, and, and moving the uh, sponsor around there. I just would like to pull that uh, part of the consent calendar and have a discussion amongst the board. Uh, yeah. It's not part of the consent calendar. Yeah. Those are action items separate from the consent calendar. Okay, even better. Any other questions about the consent calendar or a motion to approve it? I move that we approve the consent calendar. Second. Okay, hey, student trustee Garcia Bustamante? Yes. Trustee Dana? Yes. Trustee, Do uh, excuse me, Trustee Davidson? Yes. Trustee Doss? Uh, yes. Vice President Duran? Yes. President Hinckley? Yes. And Trustee Boyd? Yes. Thank you. The consent calendar passes unanimously and we move to item seven, the superintendent and board member reports. Moment, Terry. Well, good evening um, to the um, school board trustees and to our community and our wonderful students. Um, as you know, yesterday was the first day of school and um, it put the A in amazing. Uh, I had the good fortune to visit all the sites, huh, visit um, classrooms throughout the day, and to see the kind of excitement and the vibe that we had going on throughout the, um, the district was just amazing. Um, it was a teacher I ran in today at Marin Elementary School, um, Sarah Holler, who said, uh, Dr. Wells, <laughs> um, a colleague pointed out to me that the kids came to school this year ready to do school. And for those who can recall, last year was just the opposite and we had all kinds of challenges and we contributed that to the um, Zoom. Uh, and, and now since we're not doing Zoom, um, it's night and day um, from how kids are coming and entering school this year, ready for school than um, it was last year. So we're looking for, uh, forward to this year being a banner year. Uh, on the screen, you see AUSD, AUSD, first day of school 2022. Our model this year is Albany Proud. And what you're about to see are some pictures because, you know, a picture, um, as we recall, states and says a thousand words. And so as I walked um, through schools, we were able to take pictures and people throughout um, those schools took these pictures to see what it was like the first day of school. Um, you may know what this school is. This is our Moran primary grade school across from AMS. And um, kids were excited just to be kids. And this is a beautiful thing to see. Here, um, the camera person caught me visiting classes at Carnell. I had a chance to visit all the classes at, at Carnell and just talk to all the kids and the teachers pretty much. And, um, and so the camera person said, hey, can I take a picture of you? So I left some kids and huddled up next to the teacher who was excited about uh, me being in the classroom. Uh, and so um, this was just the spirit today. And then Carnell, new school yard. Oh my goodness. Woo! Um, remember in the spring, we had much discussion around um, Carnell schoolyard, what to do, when to do it, um, not to do it, have it more. And I think it was Vice President um, um, Clementine Duran who mentioned that, hey, we can do irrigation and have a big block of grass. and. And we went back and forth and did additional research. And although we were not able to do um, everything that some of the, uh, our environmentalists wanted, we made sure it was environmentalist friendly schoolyard. And we are happy and excited about that. You get to see pieces of it. Um, also, um, I was told that um, I got caught playing basketball with the third graders. And, and then and the principal came out and let me know she was a basketball player in high school. 
um, and, and wanted to challenge me, but I, I didn't want it to be about us adults on the yard, but we like to play too. <laughs> next next um, slide. And then here we are at the middle school, um, kids doing break time, um, happy to see their friends, um, just ecstatic. The joy was off the charts. Um, a wonderful thing. It reminded us of all that hard work we did this summer and in the spring. Um, it, it was well worth it because we do the work, um, not for the applause, but we do it for the cause. And here it is before you. And then some of the new books that are in town in our school, um, you got a snippet of here um, with the picture book wall here, new books for the new year. And this is a new school year for um, public schools. And then this is the um, day before school um, on the Friday, and we call it our Institute Day, where we get all the teachers um, in the school and uh, classified employees to come and um, we talk about the upcoming year. Um, we get rah, rah, we get fired up and we get excited about that. And after this, we were able to treat our professionals like professionals and have lunch for them um, immediately after and let them have time to reconnect because um, many of them haven't seen each other since um, leaving in June. And so the spirit was high, the teachers are excited about teaching and learning and um, it was like fire. Um, everybody caught on. And so this was a very, very exciting. Um, of course, I did the close out um, speech, um, I'm talking about some, some of the many accomplishments that we had, at least a few of the many accomplishments we had. And the teachers got to see the new Cougar field. And that was so exciting. Um, and so this was the um, kickoff for us. This is our first day of school, 2022. Our model this year, again, is Albany Proud, and we a number of teachers wore that Albany Proud t-shirts the first day of school. Madam Chair, President Hinckley, that concludes the superintendent report this evening. Great, thank you. You should have pictures of the very bright cougar fields <laughs> um, to match all those red t-shirts. Um, I just wanted to, so this is our first regular board meeting of the year, but the board has already been doing some work. We had a workshop last week where we talked about sort of reaffirming some commitments to effective board meetings, meaning shorter, <laughs> manageable board meetings that the public can really stay engaged in um, and really sort of reaffirmed our commitments to keeping our focus on discussing and making decisions that affect students. So you may see a little bit less uh, time spent on some of our items that we think are fun, um, like reading recognitions and resolutions, but we're gonna be trying to shorten some of that so that we can focus on the discussions and votes that we need to take. Um, so that was a great workshop where we talked about our self-evaluation, did have some public participation, which we always appreciate. And uh, one other agreement we came out with uh, from that meeting was that we will use these board reports um, to really report back to the community on the work we're doing with the committees that we each sit on, um, with the sites that we're assigned to, so that we're really using these board reports as a way for the community to get more information about the work that's happening in between board meetings. We also last week had a, an orientation slash training for our two student board members, one of whom is returning, uh, Trustee Dana returning as a senior, and one of whom is new, Trustee Garcia Bustamante, which some of you met um, last June, uh, but now Trustee Garcia Bustamante is here. And so we had a great discussion with district staff and myself and Vice President Duran and um, just super excited to have you both here for the year um, and super excited to have some experience and also a new a new voice. So welcome. Thank you for uh, welcome to your first regular board meeting. Uh, welcome to your first vote now that you've um, been here for two items. And that's my whole report. Just thank you everyone for getting school started. Um, everything looks great. And I will pass it to Vice President Duran. 
Um, I'd like to welcome the community and the students and the staff back to um, a brand new year and it'll be it'll make all of Albany pr pride as the superintendent mentioned. Um, I, I'm guessing that the other board members will be talking about exciting first day and I kind of wanted to focus on a concern that I had uh, around the first two days of school that I really wanted to share, especially with the board. I, I think we all need to be aware. Um, I walked around the schools, or I passed by the schools yesterday in walking, and um, I did. I drove by today, and basically, I noticed the same thing, which was at Albany Middle School and Albany High School, the front doors and other doors around the building that present themselves to the public streets were open. And I imagine, you know, part of it was because these have been warm days, but it raised for me a red flag in as much as I didn't see any adults out there in, in any way supervising and checking to, to see people like myself just walking down the street. And who are you and, and their students like 15 feet away. And so um, I did speak to the superintendent about it and he is having the, uh, a safety task force that will be meeting. Um, and I'm just hoping that we'll resolve some of these sort of immediate safety security issues so that um, uh, everybody will feel safe, including me. Thank you. Uh, let me just interject that, um, for, that the public needs to know that we do have cameras on those areas, um, just so that um, as an additional safety measure, um, we do have our cameras on all those areas. And I don't think I mentioned that. Thank you. Trustee Doss. Uh, thank you, uh, President Hinckley. Uh, also, uh, Vice President Duran, thank you for uh, bringing that up. It's really important, you know, keeping our, our students safe. So really appreciate you uh, you know, going uh, above and beyond and pointing that out. Um, and, and I'm glad that we're taking care of it. Um, really excited about the first two days of school. Uh, got an opportunity to go to a few of the campuses and see the students going in. Um, and it's really powerful. Uh, and it actually really shaped uh, what I was gonna say this evening. Cause I had this whole thing planned to say about how people in the, <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. I had this I had this whole speech planned about how people in the community were attacking me personally and, and things of that nature. Um, and as I was watching the kids uh, pile into their classes today and be like all excited about the second day of school and smiling and laughing and talking to friends that they met the day before. I realized that all this stuff I had planned to say was about grownups and grown-up problems. Um, and so I threw it all out and decided not to say any of it um, and to just refocus on the reasons why we're all here, uh, which is for the students and, and, and it's not about us. So I, I, scrapped, I scrapped all that. I'm sure President Hinckley is uh, smiling about that. Um, but I wanted to uh, make sure that I mentioned that, um, you know, really excited about uh, the first two days of school, really looking forward to um, a great um, and uh, exciting year and really looking forward to helping the students um, with uh, anything that we can in order for them to strive and be great. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Boyd. Thank you, uh, no real board report for me, just, um, welcoming everyone back and sharing in the, uh, the excitement and the celebration and uh, just kind of putting my, my good vibes and hopes for uh, good wishes and kind of blessings of the universe on our, on our district this school year. Thank, thank you, uh, Trustee Davidson. Thank you. So I, we enjoyed a good first day back. I've only made it to Cornell so far to check it out, but, you know, walked around the neighborhood and seeing the kids coming and going and there is just such a wonderful vibe. Um, and I really want to thank our staff for 
finding solutions to problems that exist at their sites and making sure that there's something in place to support our students. But I do, similar to what Vice President Duran said, I unfortunately want to urge us to do a little bit better and check our boxes a little more carefully. You know, my kids arrived at Cornell and my, it's hot, it's hot. And we redid the yard and I'm so grateful for it, but we didn't add any shade. And it is hot. It is really hot. And our drinking fountains don't work. And when I brought it up, I was told they're on, they work. And so I checked and you know what? They don't because they're not all the way hooked up. It spews water out the bottom of one and the other doesn't run. We have to meet the basic human needs of our kids first and foremost on our sites and keep them safe and healthy. And then we can really educate them. But right now I'm so concerned that we have so many places where we are not keeping them safe and healthy. Just so many little places where we're just not listening or we're just not really checking the boxes all the way. And I wanna urge us to make sure that we are doing that because in the end, you know, we're making decisions and choices or letting things go and slide a little bit like an intersection. I have to say the first two days they've been watched really well, but where we don't have a crossing guard for a day or a parking drop off where there's been two accidents. And I really want us this year to start out with a focus on let's keep our kids safe and healthy. Let's make sure we're doing it. Let's have our safety plans for our district. Let's do this. And I'm, I'm ready to put in the work. And I'm super thankful to all of our staff who has been flexible when there have been things that are needed and they've had to find a solution on the fly so that our kids have what they need. But I think that we really can look at these things more holistically for our kids this year. And I'm really hoping that we can make that a priority. Um, and I really appreciate the teachers and Dr. Wells. That picture was in my son's third grade class. And he told me today, Dr. Wells came and it was fun. And I was so excited to see him on the first day. Um, and so I know there are so many positives out there. And I feel horrible kind of being a little bit of a, a downer and using my board report for that. But it you know, these are things that the site I represent, and this is for the kids. And I want them to know that our priority is that they are safe and healthy and cared for. So I appreciate everyone that does that. Thank you. Uh, student board members. Thank you, President Hinckley. Um, we had a great first day, um, or I personally did, I can speak for myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we actually wanted to focus on this last week, which um, was a week where we hosted our promised uh, JSAC intensive. Um, so we had a select group of middle school and early high school students, um, and they showed interest in participating last year. Um, and so this year we had a workshop about the board and um, the board's role in the education system, along with a couple of like little leadership training exercises. Um, and we also had participants review and discuss the results of the new student engagement survey. Um, and as a committee, we kind of have a plan um, to have a presentation out by the end of September for the board to review and discuss or whenever um, we can get that on the agenda. Um, but we also have a schedule for the committee and we're currently recruiting more members. So if you know a student who might be interested, um, please have them reach out to our emails. Um, and we're looking for middle school aged and early high school age students. So um, it's very exciting that we kind of had this last minute putting it on um, and we did have a fair, amount, uh, a fair amount of students attend and um, are very proud of, of the work that we did there. Um, and we met a lot of really, really engaged students and um, we're very excited to see how uh, the, the committee unfolds this year because it's the first year that we're going to put that on in the middle school. Um, and I'll transition over to you, Nelly. Can you first just say uh, what the name of the committee is? So yes, the JSAC. Yeah. The junior the student. Yeah, thank you. All the words. <laughs> the, yeah, my bad. I'm so sorry. Um, I always, the acronyms, um, the Junior Student Advocacy Committee. Um, and that's the middle school branch. And then we have the high school branch, which is the Student Advocacy Committee. So that's called Great. the SAP. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Um, we also wanted to report um, on the CSBA conference we attended in July, um, California School Boards Association. Um, we were able to hear presentations from a lot of individuals that have a, abundance of experience in education. And we wanted to share some key takeaways from the conference that range from um, social emotional learning and techniques that create a more efficient school board. 
Um, one keynote speaker that we really took a really great deal from was Dr. Victor Rios, and he had a very interesting method on how he believes teaching should be carried out, and he conveyed how important it was for a district to do its job in engaging every student despite a lack of interest or a sense of importance from some students. And then we also um, attended a workshop about crisis management and how important it is to have emergency protocols and policies in place long before any crisis happens and the importance of having established assigned roles in crisis. Um, Another workshop we attended was how to increase community engagement. And we were also reminded of barriers that create a lack of one, um, which are language barriers, lack of trust, um, conflicting schedules, or no time to be involved. And some of the suggestions that we got were to better understand our community. And so we know how to address them and try to make ourselves more approachable and accessible like hosting events um, to speak to individual board members outside of board meetings. And lastly, um, we spoke to other board members from across California. And one suggestion that we got was to um, host a district-wide fundraiser. Um, and they explained to us how it's the biggest fundraiser of the year and how it connects um, their community so much. So um, it's something that we might want to consider doing. Um, something to add here is like around um, the different communities that Unali was talking about. Um, we also want to think about like the student community specifically because that's kind of who we're focused on, but then also just our general community as well um, and try to engage the folks that um, maybe aren't being as engaged right now. Um, and then also uh, we did have a couple of announcements um just from the different sites so for the high school um schedule change request forms are going to be looked at tomorrow and thursday august 18th if i'm not mistaken um, and then there's a college application information night on zoom which is um, august 31st and i think you can find more information on the ahs website um, and then cornell has a kindergarten back to school night august 25th um, and they're Regular back to school night is September 1st, and then Ocean Views Kindergarten back to school night is also August 25th. Um, so those are some dates to keep in mind um, for the different sites as we're um, heading into the school year. So, yeah. Thank you, and that concludes our report. Great, thank you. We now move to uh, public comment on matters that are not on the agenda. So. You are here to make a comment that is not related to an upcoming agenda item. Please raise your hand. And we do have a couple. Thank you for the timer. And we'll start with Roberta. Good evening, board members. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi, yeah, I did send an email to um, board member Hinckley in regards to the safety at the Albany Middle School Annex for the first graders. I heard that it's an open campus and hearing what school board member, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but Duran, Duran, what she spoke about the safety of our children. I find it uh, absolutely absurd that you are not having a closed campus since you do have first graders there. And my other, um, my, uh, another thing I wanted to um, speak about was when um, school board member Davidson talked about not having enough shade at Cornell. I want to let you know that there's 90 kids in the first graders that use one, one play structure and it's exposed. There's no undercover for them to get out of the sun. So I, I just want to uh, let you know that the first graders, we need to make sure that we think about them, that they're very, very little still. And we need to have their safety, number one, and not have an open campus at the Albany Middle School Annex. Even though the middle school do, does use it, I believe that you could have the teachers walk those middle schoolers over and unlock whatever needs to be unlocked but we need to keep safety, number one, our high priority, especially being so close to BART. And another issue is I have seen, and my husband has seen people 
walk into that gym that do not belong in the Albany Middle School gym since it's wide open for anybody to walk in and you have bar tracks right there. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, pa Patty. Chef, no Oops. Uh, Patty, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. I just wanted to say um, thank you all for such a wonderful first day and a big shout out to Dr. Wells who came by and visited my fourth graders. Um, it was really fun to see him there and, um, and it kind of sparked a little mini civics lesson in my class about who the superintendent was. Um, and so that was just a really fun, exciting moment for the first day. And so thank you so much, Dr. Wells. I really appreciated that. Thank you. I'm out of practice with the Zooming. All right, uh, next is Walter. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Walter McMath, father of Kane. He is a first grader at Ocean View. Uh, it was brought to my attention that there is a potential plan being discussed to transfer our principal. Um, that that is, excuse, let, me, is, let me let me interrupt. Um, that's an agenda item. Um, this um, item is for non-agenda items. Um, we're going to be addressing that alone. Um, have an opportunity to address that um, down the agenda if you have it in front of you, but um, not at this time. Just for, for clarification. Forgive me, I didn't realize that was on the agenda. Thank you. That's all right. So it's item 11A, which will be in about an hour, maybe 45 minutes. All right. I think that's all of our public comment. So we now will move to uh, the first, uh, I, first and their only non-review and action item, which is a staff report on summer school and high school grades from 2022. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, President Hinckley. Um, we have a summer school report, report um, prepared for you. I'm going to turn it over to um, our assistant superintendent, Dr. Ann Shin, um, for this item. Thank you, Dr. Wells. Good evening, Superintendent Wells. Good evening, Board Trustees and Albany community. We are here tonight to share information about our summer school program, which took place in the months of June and July. And we were very fortunate to have our executive director, Deb Brill, lead as the summer school principal, and she will be leading this presentation tonight. Thank you so much, Dr. Shin. Great to see all of the board members here today and um, Albany community, I know you're out there. Um, and so I'm really pleased in my capacity as summer school principal um, to be able to share this information with you. It was really an honor to serve in this role this year. I got to see some students I'd never met before who were younger, some high school students who had passed through the middle school that were so much fun to reconnect with. Um, and it was really my first experience with having all of those grades under one roof um, and very much enjoyed my experience um, with all of them. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, please. So I wanna just start by sharing um, the different components um, of our summer school program. Um, and so first I wanna talk about our special education component, um, the extended school year um, program, which is um, the program that for students who have that in their IEP as part of their program. Um, we had four classrooms. We had a preschool classroom, an elementary classroom, a middle school classroom, and a high school and transition classroom. All of the classes did it. Um, the teachers did a really amazing and wonderful job with bringing in enriching activities, lots of in, lots of just sort of high level, high engagement level activities. Um, uh, and I think our students had a wonderful experience. Go ahead and slide down. And then we also offer just as an additional um, service that's not IEP mandated, um, just a special education enrichment program for um, grades. We have one, four, five classroom, and we had a seven, eight classroom. And those classrooms, what we did was we had three different teachers that rotated through them one hour each a day. So students received an hour of math instruction today, um, a day, an hour of English reading, writing instruction a day and then an hour of social emotional connection time each day. Um, and so I think it kept it very fresh and engaging for them. Um, and it was a nice balance of 
of really trying to beef up and um, build confidence in academic skills, but at the same time, having some really fun time to connect and build communication skills through fun activities. I want to go ahead and continue. Thank you. We also had um, a program for our English language learners. Um, we had a classroom that was grades four through six and another classroom grades seven and eight combined. Um, and those in the classes focused on, on English language skills, again, bringing in some wonderful hands-on activities um, as well as reading books. Um, and it was um, a very successful program. Um, and then we had a program called Summer Connections. Um, and this was a program, this was our only program that was um, shorter because we wanted to meet the needs of more students. So we had two two-week sessions um, for fourth and fifth grade and two two-week sessions for sixth or eighth grade. That way we were able to um, have more students and um, they were led by our counseling and mental health staff. Um, and again, the, the intent for this was for students for a variety of reasons that could use a little extra time in school focusing on connecting with one another. Um, and the, the programs, they had lessons um, where they looked at, you know, friendship challenges, social media for the older students, um, and a wide variety of just wonderful team building engagement opportunities where they could work through um, communication challenges, but in a really fun, engaging way. Great, and continue, please. Um, and then for we also, of course, had our high school credit recovery program. Um, and in that program, we um, had the traditional in, in school program. Um, we took every student that signed up, and I'll talk about the enrollment process when we look at the D's and F's, but um, what we ended up with was two math classrooms with all levels of math offered. Um, we offered, um, we had a social studies classroom that was able to meet the needs of any of the students needing social studies credit recovery, whether it was world history, US history, government or economics. So the teacher is able to do some tailored programming within the classroom. Um, and then we had an English classroom again with all of the different levels offered. And then we also piloted something new this year. We wanted to um, have an online component, but with support embedded. Um, and kind of thinking about for, for high schoolers who received a DNF and therefore were eligible for high school summer school credit recovery, um, we wanted to look at, you know, okay, so they had a hard time for whatever the reason was um, during the regular school year. We want to give an opportunity, we gave an opportunity not just for high school credit recovery, but also for grade replacement for college applications, right? So if it was a D and they wanted to replace it with something higher than that. Um, and so our concern was if we just offer the online but don't offer any support, you know, how is that going to be for them? But there are a lot of families that the attendance requirements are very strict for our um, high school credit recovery program that's just per, per ed code. And so for families who are traveling or if the students can't be there for all three hours every day or whatever it is, the online did offer another option. So what we did was we had four hours a day where there was a teacher in a classroom ready to offer support for students. And that, and we had one of the teachers who was there three of the hours case managed. And so he made contact through emails, phone calls, checking in, hey, I noticed you haven't started on your course yet. Do you need some support? I'm here, why don't you come on in? And, and so students could do it, do it on a drop-in basis. Um, Cyber High requires uh, the exams to be proctored. So anytime a student was at a, level, at a point in the coursework where they needed to take a test, they would come in, but it was also um, a support option um, that was offered for them. And the Cyber High program didn't end with summer school. What we were able to do was to have one of our wonderful teachers who had been working with a lot of credit recovery during the year um, remained available for the remainder of summer. And we made that connection with our students so that kids could continue to work on the credit recovery and continue to get exams proctored throughout the summer um, and throughout this year. So any students who didn't finish, which are quite a few, most of them actually did not finish, um, are able to continue that work and she is continuing to remain in contact with them as are their counselors. Let's go ahead and continue. So just in terms of our approach and our strategies for success, always at the heart of everything is relationship building, you know, especially for students who are feeling disconnected from school in some way, us establishing relationships with those students is really important. And I think we had a, a really wonderful, wonderful summer school staff this year who did a great job of taking that time to build relationships. Um, it was also 
really helpful just as the administrator of summer school that I knew a lot of these students from middle school. Um, and so that was a really nice returned connection um, as well as our office staff. Um, um, there was that familiarity there. Um, so that was one piece. Um, and then, you know, with the high school credit recovery in particular, we really need students to understand what the attendance requirements are because it's a lot of coursework in a short amount of time and they're not permitted to miss very much. So we we're really clear. I went around, talked to all the classes, made sure the families were aware. And then as soon as a student had missed, even just, you know, um, was tardy and missed the class, we we're immediately meeting with them and the parents saying, okay, we want you to be successful here. How can we help you? Let's make sure you get here, you know, all of those pieces and found that to be really effective. And just kind of that piece of having multiple adults checking in with them um, and, and following up was, was really effective. Okay, next slide, please. And so just looking at our enrollment for summer school, our elementary program um, for ELD, we had um, 17 students in our, this is the elementary grades. Um, our connections program, we had 16 students. Our RSP program, eight. Um, our um, preschool, seven, and ESY K5, seven. Um, and then you can see for middle school, um, about again, 17 in our ELD, 20 in our connections program seven in our middle school um, resource program and 10 in our ESY program. Um, and then our ESY high school transition was seven students. And that's just based on IEP. Next slide, please. Um, the next set of slides, um, I wanna give a big shout out and thank you to Linda Williams for pulling this data from the high school. Um, the reason that we're sharing this as part of a summer school presentation is just the context of who needed high school credit recovery um, and or an opportunity to replace a D in order to make them eligible for, for particular college admissions. Um, and so the data that was pulled is uh, who, the, who the students were that were basically invited to summer school. And what we did was we opened up our summer school invitation to any student who had a DRF. Um, and they, we first invited them to our, um, our regular summer school program. Um, and then we also invited them, if, if needed, to the cyber high, to enroll in cyber high. Um, and so I'm not going to read through all of the numbers on there, but what you can see on there are the number of students who received um, Ds or Fs in these, in these different classes. Go ahead and move to the next slide. And so this is by grade. And um, you, one thing that I would like to just call out on here, and actually came up with a board question that um, had us looking at more information. The number on there, if you look at, um, like for example, if you look at grade nine, um, and it says 149 Ds and Fs, that's not 149 students who received Ds and Fs, it's 149 Ds or Fs, right? So one student, for example, might have you know, three these are Fs. And so we did go back through um, and we looked at the data um, just to kind of tease out that, that difference. And um, if you look at, I'm just switching my screen here. Um, so for example, um, if you look at Fs, we, in the ninth grade, there are 24 students who received at least one F. In the 10th grade, there were 38 students who received at least one F. In the 11th grade, this is in the fall, 26 students, and um, in the 12th grade, 20. And when you look at the data between the fall and spring, often it's the same um, groups of, of students. And so that would, that full data was included in the pack in the answers to the, the board's um, questions. Um, and then if you go to the next slide. Um, and then this is just the data broken down by um, race ethnicity. As it did in the packet, and let's go ahead and continue to the next slide. So, on this slide, what you can see is what our course enrollment was. And so, um, you can just see the breakdown of how many students took each of the courses um, that we offered. Um, we, and again, we didn't turn anybody away. So, it was kind of the challenge of students who need it and um, a variety of different reasons why they would or wouldn't sign up based on whether their families were going to be around for that entire time or if the student was going through some other. Some other stuff and was not able to enroll. Go ahead and go to the next slide. And so this is a look at the number of students who did recover grades during the summer school period. So we had 44 students in person out of the 47 who had enrolled who recovered their grades. 
Um, and for cyber high, you can see the numbers are really low. And again, this was something we had piloted. Cyber high was new to us as of um, we, we got the contract with it. I believe it was a week before summer school began and did a crash course on how to enroll students in cyber high. And, um, and then our teacher reached out to all of the different students and made sure that they were all set and um, active on there. Um, and so what you can see is that we had of the 36 students enrolled only 23 actually even engaged in the coursework so we had a number of students who even with multiple contacts still didn't go on there to actually work on their course um so what we were trying to do this year is we we've provided a list to the counselors of students of where they are in their progress on cyber high um, we have um, the teacher um, who had worked with students after summer school is again continuing to work with students on credit recovery and is following up with students so we're hoping to um, help a number of these students finish their credit recovery from cyber high even though summer is over go ahead on to the next slide it's our final content slide um, and so just in terms of my recommendations and i was just I, I was reflecting at the end of summer school and talking with some different people who participated in helping with summer school what would what could we do for next year? And um, you know, one of the pieces that you know we really grappled with this year is how much to kind of require kids who are doing cyber high to be in person to some degree. Um, and what we found is the students who showed up and just worked in a room with an adult completed a lot more than students who didn't show up. Um, and so what I would recommend is with flexibility, there's going to be times that a student can't come in because their family is out of town or they're sick or whatever their circumstances, they cannot come in. Um, and so we wouldn't want to deny a kid access to cyber high for that reason. Um, but to the extent possible to have some requirement, like once, once a week, you're signed up to come in for an hour to meet with the teacher and check in and go over your progress, you know, and then let's make a plan. Hey, now that you're here, what do you think? Maybe two hours, three times a week, who can come and work in here, you know, that sort of thing. So to try to exert a little bit um, more, not a requirement, but um, to really, unless there's an opt-out reason, to really try to get the kids in there to, to get some support. And, and different than the in-person summer school, they can work at their own pace. It doesn't have to be three hours a day for four weeks straight. It's a, a little bit more flexible, but still they need the support. Um, I, I would recommend that we continue with the hybrid of having, I think the in-person works really well for a number of students, the online works well for other students. Um, having a summer school counselor would be very helpful. There are a lot of questions we are trying to go through around what particular classes people needed and credit recovery and looking back at their transcripts and all of that. Um, and, or instead of that, it could also be just stipending the high school counselors to be the point person for enrolling their caseload of students. Because I think one of the gaps that we really saw was the number of kids we offered it to and the number of kids who accepted. So if, you know, maybe starting in March, if high school counselors were able to then start going through all of these lists and pulling kids in and being like, hey, we noticed this summer's coming up. We have plenty of time to plan. You know, we really want to get you in here. Let's replace that F and start working on that enrollment from that perspective. I think that could be really helpful. Um, and that would also give plenty of time for hiring once we know numbers. Um, and then I think um, an integrated academic um, support bridge program, not just for resource students, but for any students needing academic support, especially at those transition grades between you know, fifth and sixth and between eighth and ninth, helping you know, students who need additional support with reading and math, um, helping to kind of close the gap in that way. I think this would be a great opportunity. Summer would be a great opportunity to, to offer the, a little bit of an intensive um, uh, skill recovery work for students. So, um, and that brings us to our final slide, which is just, thank you for listening to my presentation. Um, and I would be happy to answer any questions people have at this time. I, see, I can see board member Doss's hand, but I don't know if anyone wants to say anything in general or um, Dr. Shin, if you're also wanting to add anything at the end here. All right, we'll move to board, board questions, starting with Trustee Doss. Uh, thank you. Uh, great presentation. Uh, really informative. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, one, did you notice anything during the summer school that would help with more preventive measures of not having as many students with those grades? Like, did you 
kind of see or figure out like some trends or maybe some reasons mm -hmm. for the D's and F's that would help to prevent that, you know, um, in, in the fall and, and help those numbers go down. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, my other question is, I really liked uh, when you were talking about how you were following up with the students and how there were multiple uh, touch points with different adults that were stepping in to, you know, help, you know, hold the student accountable. Is that something that could be replicated um, during the fall, like on a larger scale, uh, to, again, to prevent students from getting behind in the first place? Mm -hmm. Those Thank are you. great questions. Thank, thank you for those. Um, yeah, you're making me, you're making me think, which is, which is appreciated. I think, you know, one of the pieces that comes to mind for me, um, just in my discussions with some of the students who are really struggling, is that a number of the students were behind on so many credits and felt this sense of just complete overwhelm um, and had felt sort of this lack of success. And so, you know, then they come into a road bump and, and they're like, well, I, I'm already so far behind anyways, just let's forget it. And it took, you know, it took a lot of like work of like, nope, you know, one credit at a time, let's get this done, let's get through this piece of it. So, you know, I think um, just kind of thinking about touch points along the way that if there is a way to be able to to work with these students on the credit recovery before they feel that they've failed so much and are so far behind you know and i think just the summer school what we've been offering isn't enough I, i'm really grateful the district's invested in having a teacher who is really focused on credit recovery this year i think that's going to make a huge difference she has relationships with the kids she's going to be working with them so i mean i think more of that would be really useful all along the way like let's not let a kid get you know where they have like you know, eight different classes with credits they have to recover, you know, that sort of thing. So let's really kind of do it as much as possible along the way. And, you know, with the online cyber high, that really offers another opportunity where could could work on credit recovery at any point. It doesn't just have to be during the one little session of summer school that that's offered. And so that's one piece that um, that I would I would say. And, and then, yeah, in terms of the adults, you know, it's interesting. It makes me think back at the middle school years ago. One of the things we did was we put we took our high risk students and we connected them. We had an adult on campus who chose to be the point person for that kid. And it might've been a kid who's an eighth grader, but their sixth grade teacher had a great relationship with them or the campus supervisor had a great relationship with them or whatever it was. Um, and I, I know like there's a lot of caring adults at all of our, all of our schools. Um, and, you know, but sometimes there's some sort of special connection that we can really leverage. And so, you know, trying to find a way to um, to work with that, I think would be really, really helpful. So it's like, I think it, like it, you said, like the more eyes watching out for a kid, Hey, how are you doing? How can I help you problem solve this? You know, that sort of thing, like that connection and engagement piece. Thanks. Uh, Vice President Duran. Um, a couple of things. Um, I think, um, trustee Doss hit it on the, on the, head the nail is that it <laughs> and and you too um as well executive director brill in the sense that i think in summer schools almost remedial i mean it's after the fact it's after kids have failed it's after kids have, you know need all these credits and i think we we have to figure out how to be proactive and i know and the things you're talking about, those special connections that happen with adults is so key. And I think um, certainly the Student Achievement Committee, I think can just look at this. It, to me, summer school is such an old concept and, and been around for so long. And I'm not sure that it's really working effectively these days. I really think we need to look, kind of think 21st century and what would be the most effective things for our students. Um, I just put these numbers together and it looks about ha only half of the students that attended the summer school uh, at the high school uh, got credit recovery. So there's another half that continues to fail. And, and we've got to figure out different ways. Summer school may not, is not the best way for all kids. And I think we have to really push this hard this year and look at solutions ongoing, not after the fact, you know, but catch these kids early, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's teachers giving tip offs to, to you and, and to the principal or the VP, whoever, and, and we start tutoring programs or, or these one-on-ones with these students much sooner in the fall, 
and, and ongoing and not wait till summer when we try to, to do remediation and, and recovery when, when the ideal time is during the school year. So I just wanted to throw that out to you and see what your thoughts are around reshaping the whole concept of summer school. Thank, thank you for that. There are so many points you hit on that I think are, are so important, Vice President John. I, I think, you know, one thing that the first that thing that comes to mind is, is just that piece around that kind of early intervention. And I think the more a kid fails, the more they feel like it's harder and harder to come back from. And, and I think about like our McGregor program that starts when students are in 11th grade and is more of a small group, smaller class intervention. Um, but, you know, as students leave us in the eighth grade, we know who the students are who are going to struggle in high school. Right. Most of our most of our high school students came through Albany Middle School. We know who those students are. You know, so it's like it's we always keep kind of doing this of like, can we go back a year? Can we keep going back? Can we keep going back? You know, all of those pieces. And so to me, what it kind of brings up is what are those ways that we can put an intervention that's going to be really effective as early as possible? And, at, and if even at that point of going into high school in ninth grade, what what can we do to support those students um, right right from the beginning? And I think it has to be during the school day. When we look at intervention, I think when we're saying, like I know that in conversations with Principal McNally, they offer tutoring. They offer free tutoring. They reach out to particular kids and say, hey, we want to give you tutoring. But the students have other things to do after school. They've been in school all day. They don't want to do the tutoring. You can't force that, right? So instead, if it's our responsibility to make sure we're giving them what they need, then it's like figuring out within the course of our school day, how do we have a smaller academy? How do we leverage those pieces? And I think, um, you know, those are all really great conversation points to be having. Um, and then the other thing I would just note is that within the context of summer school, and whether we're talking about it just with summer school or as something we're trying to, you know, use as a concept, the students who had the in-person classes largely were successful, 44 out of the 47 which were covered credits, because they had a teacher in a fairly small class who was working with them they start to slide sideways. We're pulling them back in. Our campus supervisor, to me, it's like all hands on deck. Okay, let's get back to, hey, you're not getting enough work done. What do we need to do? Do you need me to sit next to you for a little bit? Like we're all really working. And those kids got through it. Kids who have struggled, they got through and they got their credits. But the cyber high, we didn't find that same level of success. And I'm not saying we should throw cyber high out as our first time kind of working with it. But, um, but I think for students who have struggled, then all of a sudden saying like, yeah, now on your own, go ahead and work through this coursework that feels really difficult, isn't, um, you know, which is why we offered the in-class support. It was there for them, but we weren't really able to get students to access it to the degree we wanted. So I think that's just, there's a, as in terms of a model, we, again, it kind of goes back to the things that we all know really well, which is students thrive with relationship, connection, you know, uh, um, and a lot of support. Thank you. I'm gonna call on myself. <laughs> um, just trying to be in a, in line here. So I, I this is a really great discussion. I think it's you know all of these are some things that we've talked about before, and I think one of the challenges is you know how do we really focus our time and attention during the year? We've talked about you know let's not set like 15 different goals for ourselves. Let's try to zero in on some things. So I think this will be a great discussion to have at our workshop next week where we try to narrow that down. And I just wanted to mention something that jumped out at me that has also been a theme for us over the past year, which is math. And that the vast major the majority of students that, of high school students that attended were trying to get re uh, credit recovery in math, or maybe some of it's also great improvement. Um, and I see, you know, we didn't actually get anyone come for math three. That's because we don't require three years of math. So there, it's not because we don't have a lot of students struggling in, in that grade level. So I just wanted to, I guess, make a little pitch that it, you know, maybe math is an area where we continue to really focus and try to um, use that as one way to, to get, you know, an avenue into understanding what's happening. And I know that the high school has talked about sort of taking a bit of a, a more holistic approach, which I also understand of, you know, not just focusing on students and how they're interacting in one classroom, but trying to um, offer them a, a full range of supports. 
um, especially since often students are struggling in more than one class. But I just wanted to raise that math issue because it does still seem like we really are seeing a lot of students hit freshman math and really, really struggle. And I know we have additional supports for our math teachers this year, but I'm hoping that we can really talk about how we're gonna try to address this problem. And so along that vein, I just wanted to ask if you could say a few more words about what an integrated academic support bridge program would look like for you and maybe you mentioned reading and math, but what are some other strategies you think we could be using, um, you know, that would fall under that bullet point of your recommendations? Yeah, I mean, I guess what, what I had in mind was we, if we're thinking about, like, let's say you take, uh, you know, a seventh grader, you know, who is um, below grade level in math or, or reading and they're in their classes, you know, they've been in their class in fifth grade and they're below and they're in the class in sixth grade and we do the reading support, we do the math support, we try to catch them up. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. That summer gives us opportunity for that additional, like let's help them leap ahead a little bit of where they are because then they're back with the rest of the class. Everybody's learning in school. So if we don't give them extra, they're gonna stay, you know, like this. And so, um, you know, I was just thinking of sort of like an intensive type of program where you have a student where it's not just like, oh, hey, let's work on math, but we have the fast bridge, we have other assessments we can use where we can really target and say, here, here, and here, these standards are gaps that they have. Let's have these like kind of small group instruction and really target what those gaps are so that when they go in next year, I mean, like you think about certain pieces around number sense and fractions and things like that, that if a kid's not getting that, it it makes everything hard, you know, so, and I know that teachers during the school year work really hard for their kids to try to catch them up. And yet sometimes it's just not enough. So could we do something in the summer where we're really targeting that using the fast bridge, using some tool like that, where we can teach specifically to the kind of gap standards, whether it's a reading intensive program, whether it's math, um, but just, you know, trying to help those students leap ahead a little bit. Great. Thank you. Uh, we do have a public comment on this item, if I could get the timer and then we can come back to the board. Great, thank you. Uh, Kira. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, my name is Kyra Easter. I have a son that attends Albany Middle. I have a question in regards to summer school. I would like to see the data that reflects the demographics of the summer school attendees. Do we have that information? We have it for high school. Um, we didn't break it down on here for any of the other programs. Okay, um, can we put that into maybe the plan for next school year going forward and for every year after because of course data is information and it helps us identify uh, where the problems may be or the patterns as we were speaking to prior. And then next, I do have a suggestion. I do work in high schools and one solution that we do utilize is uh, student surveys, right? Sometimes students have the answer or we can see patterns given um, through, well, well, what we can do is recognize patterns through their information in the survey. So not sure if you guys want to adopt that idea, but perhaps um, students can give some insight to what's going on within the classroom setting, whether it's, you know, comfortability or a teacher, um, lack of resources at home. Nevertheless, it might be a good idea, but I would like to see the data hopefully going forward. That's a super, super, super um, need that I have. Thank you. <laughs> great, thank you. And uh, yeah, I think it would be great if we could all see you. Met, so I know the presentation includes demographic data for high school. Is that because it's too small of a group at the younger grades to report that or just? Yeah, it was for a few reasons. The data specifically of high school was just trying to look at the credit recovery piece and who are the students that are needing the credit recovery and so therefore what does that look like in summer school um so the the demographic data that was provided wasn't about the, the students attending summer school it was about the d's and f's at albany high and so um 
that's yeah we didn't we didn't provide the demographic data for i mean the other groups are pretty small it's at like resource enrichment was like seven kids the esy is iep mandated it's and the summer connections was um yeah again just they're small groups but i agree data is really it just gives us information it's always you know the more data the better and right. i really like the suggestion about the student surveys too i think students have a lot to lot to share with us mm -hmm. Uh, Vice President Duran. Um, I didn't, uh, I don't mean to put our student trustees on the spot, but I was wondering, um, given all that you've heard and um, your experiences or talking with other students, um, how does this all resonate with you? And do you have any um, ideas or analysis about this yourselves as students? And you don't have to respond if you don't want to. I just wanted to hear from you. Yeah, of course. Um, you, Nelly, do you have anything you want to say? Otherwise, I can. Um, you can start. I'm still like thinking of like an adequate response to that. Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of things that go through my mind when I think about this. Um, firstly. I really like the idea of surveying students. I think that students know what's going on with them. And I think that um, they know why they're getting D's or they might have a better idea than us just speculating. Um, and so I, I do really love that idea. Um, and so I'd like to second that. And then um, as for the online um, lack of engagement, or um, I'm forgetting what the, I don't have the, Thing up in the screen right now or the presentation up on the screen but as for the cyber high i think it was called um i do see um in school like way more participation and way more engagement with teachers um especially like um having been in school these past two days it's really um quite plain and i noticed that last year as well um and so I just think having a uh, online or computer, like I think it would, I think it's a great um, idea or a great um, way to get students to participate that might not otherwise have the opportunity to, especially if there's a lot of travel going on in the summer. But um, I personally am like more for the idea of being proactive and trying to survey the students that are um, get, receiving D's and F's and then seeing what we can do during the school year, um, and then finally resorting to maybe in-person um, online, or in-person summer school. That's like kind of what I am taking away from this, but I, I thought it was really generic and I thought everyone else was voicing it. So that's why I didn't raise my hand. Um, but yeah, you know, if you have anything else to add. First of all, I agree with everything you said. Um, and then I'd also like to speak on, um, I know a lot of you were, uh, you know, like having ideas about preventative measures. And I just like, I, um, I don't know who said this, but um, it is like true, like after a long day of school, um, especially if you have like a seventh period, you get out around four. Um, I don't think most kids would be willing or have the energy to go to a tutoring session and stay there. And then for like an hour, get out at five, and then you also have homework for other classes. So I was thinking since um, the middle school and the high school um, both have advisory, um, any uh, like at-risk students, perhaps we could like message them and then there could be a time in advisory for them to meet one-on-one -on -one with their teachers or someone else, a teacher that they can work with and then they can set up a plan. Um, yeah, so that's what I have to say about preventative measures. And I think that obviously I don't want to speak for the entire student body um, because they obviously might have other preferences, um, which is important, which is um, why I think a student survey would also be really beneficial. But yeah. Great, thank you. That's really, um, really helpful. Are there any other questions or comments so i think you know this 
hits on our, what's been a priority area for the board. So I do hope this is part of our discussion next, I guess it's next week, next Wednesday, um, when we talk about how to both set some priorities for the year, but then also set some measures that we wanna look, be able to look back on. Um, as you've all said, data is really helpful. So I really appreciate hearing so quickly about summer school. I know it just ended and you've had a lot of other things going on. Um, so this is really great. And it's good to hear that some of the credit recovery efforts that we funded um, worked out for some students. So we look forward to hearing more proposals. And with that, we will move on to our review and action items. So thank you. Thank you all, and, appreciate it. And we're a little, sorry, I ran out of paper in my printer. So my agenda management is a little off. Uh, all right, so we will start with our first review and action item, which is 11A, the Certificated Personnel Assignment Order and Classified Personnel Assignment Order. And I will let Superintendent Wells present this. You may all realize this is normally on our consent agenda, but we did uh, separate this out for reasons that I think will become clear momentarily. So please go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, President Hinckley, thank you for this. Um, up first, we're going to um, hone in on our ACC program, where we have uh, an opportunity to secure um, an ACC administrator. And um, the person in charge of ACC is our very own um, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services is Dr. Ann Shin. And she will be doing, she will have the honors of introducing um, the candidate um, to come before the board um, in just a moment. Dr. Shin. Thank you, Dr. Wells, just waiting for her to be promoted. Ms. Gonzalez, did you want to say anything or do you want me to go? No? Okay. We want you to introduce her. Yes, 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 I will. Yes, I thought Ms. Gonzalez was going to um, say a few words first. Thank you, Dr. Wells. Yay, so happy to see you, Jackie. Okay, good evening, Albany community. I am so excited to welcome Jacqueline Dela Cruz Kitagawa to the ACC team and to the AUSD community. Uh, as we know, we have been in need of a dedicated site administrator with the expertise to lead and guide the continual growth and development of the ACC program, and we are so fortunate to have found this leader. Uh, Jackie has a bachelor's degree in early childhood education with a minor in business administration, as well as a CTC program director's permit. And she has worked in child develop development leadership positions, managing multiple state preschool programs and before and after school programs for over the past 10 years. She definitely had the experience and the passionate uh, and the passionate leadership uh, to effectively lead our early childhood educators. And I am happy to say she also comes with an extreme amount of positive energy that blew all of us away in the interview process. So we are so excited to welcome her to the Albany community and we wanna give her an opportunity to introduce herself. Please join me in welcoming Jacqueline Dela Cruz to our family. Thank you so much. I look forward to working with everybody. Great, thank you. We're really excited <laughs> to have somebody. Uh, I know Dr. Shin is also very excited to have somebody stepping up to coordinate <laughs> uh, this program. So welcome, thank you very much. And she will begin tomorrow morning, first day. <laughs> so. Well, before that, there's a, there's a formality. The board has to, to accept her and take a vote. Um, yes, and then once we vote, I have a list of things that need to be fixed at ACC. So we can go over that. <laughs> uh, but uh, on a serious note, um, welcome. I gotta say that was a good one. I thought you were serious. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, grab that got me. Okay. You're right. I gotta listen up. Good one. All right.
All right, this is still your show. You want who's what's the next uh, personnel item? We were hoping to take um, them one by one, um, and so um, if that's okay, Madam Chair. Uh, I think we it would be easier to approve the whole order unless somebody wants to pull an appointment. I saw Marina or Ms. Gonzalez get getting ready to say something. I don't know if it was yeah, the same I think thing, there's, but I think I think there's gonna be more discussion on one of the items than the other. So is it possible to um, separate them, uh, approve this, and then have the longer discussion around the other personnel matters? Because I think that is going to warrant a longer discussion just based on community feedback, et cetera. And I was just going to add that there's these aren't the only three items. There's a, a list of items. So maybe uh, it can be voted on in its entirety, uh, maybe with the exception of two. OK, yeah, that sounds good. Trustee Davidson. All right, so I'm, I'm sorry, I feel confused. I thought that we, there was like a plan for why we had this item separately on the agenda and that was to clearly communicate to our community. Why yes, we're, we're, we're not there yet. So we're, we're just working our way through. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm confused. So we have our entire personnel order. We have to do person by, because normally it's just part of the consent calendar. So I guess we should have some, yeah, I'm not sure what, why we're. So what I'm asking is for the superintendent to present the other two personnel, the other two specific people, and then we'll decide whether to vote on the whole thing at once or how to, how to proceed. So the other uh -oh. two that I believe you wanted to present separately were the Ocean View principal and the um, professional development TSA. Um, yeah, the, the two, um, the, um, the, um, yes, what, what I was hoping was that because ACC wasn't part of that long discussion that the board would um, move to accept ACC. You're supposed to be helping me out, HR. And, um, but I think um, the way it's presented, it might be easiest um, to just do them all together. Um, because I anticipated a longer conversation as a reset. Um, I thought it was healthiest to um, separate them out, starting with ACC. Um, and you just mentioned, um, uh, Chief Human Resource Officer, can you repeat your suggestion on how to take it um, one more time? So I was just clarifying that um, the personnel assignment order is more than just the ACC coordinator and um, the other two administrative positions. There's, there's a long list of personnel changes um, that are being recommended there. So we can do it one of two ways. We can do it the way President Hinckley um, suggested, which is to discuss um, uh, you know, the two changes um, that, we're, that we are expecting to discuss at length um, and then take a vote um, at the end um, or we can approve the assignment order with the exception of those two um, personnel changes now and then vote on those separately. So we can do it either of those two ways. And I, I suggest we consider the latter. Um, that way you have everything out the way and then we get to tone in on the two items that's gonna warrant a lot of discussion. Especially since uh, you right. said that the uh, coordinator starts tomorrow, we should vote so she can go get some rest. All right, I'm gonna use my prerogative to help us move along here. So I move that we adopt the um, personnel assignment order uh, with two exceptions. We remove the director of professional development and the principal of Ocean View Elementary uh, for further discussion next. So I'll second that. Second. Was that one person? Sorry, I'm look, looking at the order. <laughs> okay. Can we get a roll call? Yes. Was that Trustee Davidson that seconded that? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um Trustee Garcia Bustamante. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Dana? Yes. 
Um, Trustee Doss, we start with you. Did we did we also get a yes from the dog as well? <laughs> that one. Uh, yes. Thank you. Vice President Duran. Yes. President Hinckley. Yes. Trustee Boyd. Yes. Trustee Davidson. Yes. Thanks. Great. The personnel assignment order is approved unanimously uh, with two uh, removals, which we're going to proceed to discuss now, which is the Director of Professional Development, uh, Michelle Sinclair, and the Principal of Ocean View Elementary, Anna Delgado. Okay, um, first up, um, I'd like to um, bring up um, Michelle Sinclair, who requested to um, share a few words, and then um, um, Anna Delgado, and then after that, um, as superintendent, I'd like to share with the community and the board our rationale for uh, making these recommendations. So at this time, I'm gonna hand the baton over to our very own Michelle Sinclair. Okay, hi everybody. Um, thanks for having me here. I feel like I need to give you a little bit of background on this. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about um, my experiences. So first of all, I'm honored to be considered for this position, the Director of Professional Development. Um, my past experience in Berkeley Unified School District, I worked for five years as both the Coordinator of Professional Development and as a Director of State, Federal, and Special Projects. Um, in the PD department, I oversaw all the training as we transitioned to the Common Core State Standards. I also coordinated training on restorative justice, trauma-informed practice, cultural competency academies, strategies for serving students with disabilities, and the implementation of ELD strategies. Um, I also ran committees for elementary and middle school math and literacy curriculum adoptions for board approval. Um, in Berkeley, I also oversaw English learner programs, the department, and I outlined the plan for developing a new English learner master plan in collaboration with our DLAC members. In my role as the principal here at Ocean View, I've been able to understand the need of our schools and for using data, the, the value of using data regularly to identify and meet the needs of all students and develop strong and clear systems of support to set our students up for success. Though I agree that the timing on this um, situation is not ideal, I'm confident that my skills and experience would be an asset for planning on how to best create a common understanding of our district initiatives and how to implement training that's truly impactful on student outcomes. Thank you. And next we have uh, um, Anna Delgado, who um, we are recommending to go serve at Ocean View Elementary School. And so um, Anna, we pass the baton over to you. Thank you, Dr. Wells. Um, I, I know some of you um, don't see me as a familiar face because I am new to Albany. So I did want to take an opportunity to introduce myself um, to the board and to the community as a whole. Um, I have found my way here to Albany via Hayward, Berkeley, Arizona, and Los Angeles. Um, I am a, a native Angelino, and I have been in education for the past 16 years. Most recently, um, I was in Berkeley Unified as a teacher, a district math coach, a site math coach, and math intervention teacher. Um, during my time in Berkeley, I worked with teacher leaders to develop dist district-wide math assessments. Um, I developed progressions documents for teachers that identified mathematical foundational skills for grade level standards. Um, I spent a great deal of time coaching teachers on improving their mathematical instruction and was um, regularly invited to provide professional development for substitute teachers, paraeducators, um, K through five teachers and middle school teachers. Um, before coming to Albany, I uh, spent the past three years as an assistant principal at a K through sixth grade bilingual school in Hayward. Uh, during my time there, I, I'm most proud to say that I worked on developing restorative justice practices and approaches to school discipline. And I used regular mindfulness and social emotional lessons with students. Um, I have had the pleasure of working in Albany now for a few weeks, and I am just struck by the kindness and the grace that staff has extended to me. Um, I too understand the challenges of changing positions at this time. Um, for everyone, it's very difficult and stressful, and, and I consider myself uh, someone who's a champion of quality instruction. 
uh, social justice. And I'm just humbled and excited for any opportunity to be an administrator here in Albany. Thank you. And what you guys don't know, because I, I get to um, meet with the principals, um, actually, uh, um, while doing an, on a speaking engagement this um, weekend, um, I, I was um, with a couple of principals, I mean, superintendents in um, Alameda County. And um, what folks don't know is that Berkeley um, was trying to um, lure her um, for two different sites to serve as principal, and she wanted to remain in this wonderful community and, and commit to this community. And I thought I'd share that with you because they know her skill set, her level of um, expertise, her um, uh, willingness to be resolute in her belief that all kids can and will learn and, um, and to make a, a difference um, in our community and in our world. Um, now that brings me to um, how did we get here? How did we get here um, um, started off with our high school um, administrator, one of our administrators uh, abruptly resigned um, while we were getting ready to open schools. Um, and we had um, an assistant principal who was gonna serve in this role um, as a brand newbie um, to um, professional development as a director, um, realized the um, void at the high school and um, wanted to go back and help out there. And so after that, I saw the need to um, make some um, permanent moves. Um, high school was, is dealing with a lot of different challenges where um, it wouldn't be fitting to have two rookie administrators at the high school. Um, you need to have people with um, deep experience and know-how in order to make that school work for um, all kids, 1,100 plus kids. And so um, and that has created a, a number of different opportunities. And I just want to take um, a moment to um, read to the board um, really briefly on the community, um, some of um, our why around here. And I shared this with um, um, some folks today. And I just want to one um, have you notice that we put a start date of TBD to be determined because we want to continue to work with both the staff and the community on a start date to create the healthiest transition possible. We can't wait too long to execute our two major initiatives, MTSS, which is multi-tier system of support, where you have various levels of working with kids, um, making sure they get a good initial um, quality instruction. And for those kids, like every year, we have a number of them who may not get it the first time and may need some additional support. Um, and so they go to a uh, second level. And then if they need more support, they have a third intensive level thereby bringing all students um, together and providing a greater opportunity for them to meet um, grade level standards, thereby significantly reducing the student achievement gap, um, addressing our most um, disenfranchised kids. And you wanna hear me that, that repeated thing. And we have our UDL, um, Universal Design um, of, for, of Lessons, where we have lessons that are accessible to um, all skill levels so that we could be inclusive um, truly um, for all students, our special ed students, um, our um, African-American, um, our Brown students, and any student who um, is falling behind or not had an opportunity to have access um, to instruction at the level they will in the immediate future. Um, because that will have the um, biggest impact on our historically disenfranchised students, Black, Brown, and special education students. Um, we have not historically had intentionality with a systemic approach to address this group of students here in Albany. And I think we have to face that. That is the driving force. Again, these are our students who are most in need of support. Additionally, our past and current data reflect the lack of equity work um, in this subject, resulting in a significant student achievement gap. Um, providing an educational base um, on students' needs must become a reality here in Albany. And so we need to move from the rhetoric to the action and making a difference. We're making these adjustments to meet the great needs of our most disenfranchised students. And that is the reason um, why we are making these moves. Now, ideally, this is not the ideal time. We all recognize that. Um, but this is an ideal opportunity to make a difference, move away from the rhetoric and really, really address our kids who don't have as many champions in advocacy and don't come from privilege. 
And so we have to be the champions for our kids and fight for them when no one else is willing. And so I stand unapologetic um, doing what's best for all kids, especially our disenfranchised kids. And that's why I'm making this um, recommendation tonight before the board, community, and the staff. Thank you. Um, so just to clarify also something that the board's been emphasizing, which is, which I know is not the foremost thing on anyone's mind right now, but one of the things the board um, has been has been asking for is just clarity on when we move people, when we move people around internally. Um, and obviously this is a last minute issue where we don't have time to op ad publicly advertise these positions, but um, could you explain what the plan is for um, doing open searches on positions in order to stay in alignment with our uh, best practices about uh, external hiring or uh, external really advertising? Yeah, um, Madam Chair, President Hinckley, I really appreciate that question because um, these will be interim positions. Now, what does that mean? That means we have the option, and in this case, um, we have the commitment to um, include staff as we open the positions up um, somewhere around spring um, and have um, develop a pool and have people apply for the positions um, with staff and community input on the interview panels. I think that's a, a, incredibly important to be inclusive, collaborative, and transparent as we move forward so that the staff um, community have a say in um, their leadership. Um, we didn't have the luxury to do that right now. Schools are open, ready or not, here they are. And um, we have to make these kinds of decisions on occasion. That's what leadership does. So but to your question, um, we would have an open, plan on having an open process in the spring um, for these positions and they would be deemed interim. And then also, could you just, you, you mentioned the the what the TBD means on the assignment order in terms of when these changes could take place. Um, but do you could I wasn't sure if you had a specific time frame in mind or if you could say a little bit more about the transition plan. I want us to not be rigid because we want to move forward together, and it's important that we um, ha have the community and the staff weigh in. Um, that way, um, one, our value folks would have a say, um, and it's sometimes better to um, take a deep breath and, and then move forward. Um, we are in a crisis situation. I want to, the community to fully understand our data speaks volumes. We're a high-performing district, except when we disaggregate the data and we see so many of our disenfranchised kids um, not doing better, but doing worse because we haven't had the historical intentionality again and a systemic approach and effort, collective effort to address these issues. And now we want to address them very aggressively, our special ed students, our black students and our brown students and our poor white and um, Asian students um, who may be um, need, in need of additional help. And so we use data to um, guide um, our moves and, and, and provide um, the right kind of supports in a systemic way. And we and, and, and that is really connected to equity. And so we haven't been providing equity and it's the onus is on us to start doing so effective immediately. Our kids who don't have um, um, those champions, those kids who don't have the advocacy, those kids who don't have the privilege um, need us to fight for them. And that's why we're doing this. If it wasn't best for kids, um, I have to be responsible for all elementary schools um, the middle and high schools, not one school, but all schools. And so all, and, and that means all students. And so um, from time to time, this would happen. Someone posed the question, if this was Moran, would this happen? Oh, absolutely. If it were Carnell, this is what's going to happen. Is we're going to have to have a uh, uh, move away from rhetoric and, and, and feeling um, bad about certain kids to doing something really good for certain kids because we're responsible for all kids. Great, thank you for the clarification. Um, and 
people who've been to a lot of board meetings probably know the board does not is not responsible for making hires or uh, personnel decisions beyond the superintendent. Um, but we so we don't uh, typically pull you know separately discuss these kinds of transitions. But we thought it was really important just to for everyone to understand how we got to this point, and then for everyone to have clarity about the process. Um, that's being followed and really appreciate um, Principal Sinclair and uh, Principal, future, potential <laughs> future Principal Delgado uh, for joining us and weighing in and, and uh, appreciate the explanation from Superintendent Wells. So I know we have a lot of public comment, but first we'll have some board discussion uh, starting with Trustee Doss. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you. Um, also, uh, welcome, uh, Ms. Delgado. Really appreciate you taking the time to um, to come this evening. Uh, Principal Sinclair, thank you for uh, coming as well and, and taking the time to explain to the community uh, why you want to make the the move. Um, and so uh, we've we've had discussions, um, and and I think that you're doing an amazing job at Ocean View. Um, and honestly, I wish that you were staying there because I think that you're doing a great job. Uh, and 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 I'm I'm sad that that you could potentially be leaving because I think you're doing a great job. Um, with all of that being said, I have a couple of questions because I'm having a really tough time understanding how this move one is what's best for kids and how it's related to the kids in this district that are struggling the most. I mean, I heard um, what you said, Dr. Wells, and everything you said is correct. The students that struggle in this district are often forgot forgotten about because the averages make it to where we're still a high performing district, even though those students are failing and even though we are specifically failing those students. The averages are so high that we still get to call ourselves a high performing district. But that's for a whole host of reasons that we can't really get into tonight because we'd be here all night, right? It's because of a lack of diversity in the students and the student body. It's because of lack of diversity in the staff. It's because of lack of diversity with, uh, within the teachers. It's also because of a lack of diversity within the community overall. The city of Albany lacks diversity and it just trickles down and everything else is affected by it. But again, we're not here because we can't fix all those problems. However, we are in charge of the school district, so we can fix the issues within the school district, but we have to be intentional about fixing those problems and we have to actually do things that fix those problems. I'm having a really tough time understanding how this move fixes those problems. If anything, the students that are currently struggling at Ocean View have built relationships with Principal Sinclair and now those relationships will be fractured because they have to get to know a new principal. Has nothing to do with the new interim principal's qualifications because as she just stated, she is qualified, probably overqualified with all the experience that she has. But that doesn't fix the issues of the fractured relationships for the students that are most in need that are gonna be fractured because not only did they lose the most popular principal in the district, Terry, and I think the other principals would just agree. I don't even think it would be an argument. I don't think anybody's gonna be offended. Terry's the most popular principal. We already lost her. And then they had to get used to a new principal and they did it. The kids are resilient and they, they dig it. They powered through. And now they love Principal Sinclair. And now we're asking them to do it again, right after a pandemic right after the students that are struggling the most have been on Zoom and are even further behind than they were before. This plan to me doesn't say kids are super far behind and this is a plan that's gonna help them get caught back up. That's, I don't see that here. And the only reason I'm mentioning it is because it was very well stated by our superintendent where everything you said, I agree with. I just don't see how this helps those students, how it's related. And so now those students are gonna be pushed even further behind. Now they have to get used to a new leader and build new relationships, which is gonna push them even further behind. 
and the programs and ideas and things that are in place are going to get pushed even further behind. Everything moves back. And then the staff has to get used to a new leader. Everything gets pushed back. So in actuality, this move is not the best thing for students. It's detrimental to the advancement of the students. And it is specifically detrimental to the students that are already struggling in this district. When we make moves like this, we have to do a few things. One, we have to be intentional about what we do. And if we keep talking about the issue, which we know it is, there are students that are failing in this district. So we know what the problem is, right? And the example that was given to me, and I'm gonna use this example and then I'll give the rest of my time because I know other people wanna talk, is if you have a car and the car has four flat tires and you change the engine and you put a brand new engine in the car and you paint the car, a brand new uh, paint color, and then you change the interior and you put leather in the interior and you put TVs all throughout the car, but you don't fix the four flat tires, then where does the car go? Nowhere. What we're doing and what we have consistently been doing is we are repainting the car, we're putting leather in the seats, we're putting TVs in the dashboard, but we are not fixing the four flat tires we have to fix the four flat tires or the other stuff doesn't matter because the car doesn't move. And that's exactly what's happening with the students that are struggling in this district the most. They are still right there. And we're doing all this different stuff. It's really flashy and really cool and really exciting and I love it. But the car's not moving and the kids aren't moving. They're still scoring the same, which means we're not addressing the actual problem. And so we have to start addressing the actual problem and we definitely can't add to it, which I think is what we're doing tonight. But kids are resilient. And at the end of the day, whatever decision is made, kids are gonna be just fine. They're gonna, they're gonna power through. But we shouldn't always add extra things for them to have to power through. And then the last thing I'll say is that um, we've had four interim um, positions since I've been on the board and all four of those interim positions, the person kept the job. So there wasn't an actual robust interview process. Like there were four interim people who were and all four of those people got the job, which is fine. They're doing a great job, but that's not really what the board asked for. Thank you. Sorry, that happened right when my headphone died. Uh, go ahead, Vice President Duran. Um, I, I just wanted to comment that um, I, I know this is very difficult uh, for Ocean View community. Uh, we've heard a lot from both parents and staff, and it sounds like there was a wonderful relationship with Principal Sinclair. Um, she, she was able to do it within a year, and, and lots of positive things were happening. Um, uh, just two things. One is, um, I don't believe that any school or district, excuse me, Superintendent Wells, that, it, you know, that it's only one person that can do this. You know, it's, it's a team of people. And, and I know the Ocean View teachers are a strong staff. Um, and so, yes, they will power through it. And we have a, a, Future principal, Ms. Delgado, who has stepped up, who has the background and the experience, and I think she's going to do a great job. And on the other hand, Ms. Sinclair, if you listen to her tonight, she said it would be an honor for her to serve in this new position in, in professional development. I think we all, you know, we, we all grow at, at different times. And, and I just think that she stepped up for the district and she's also 
and know she can do the job and she's willing to do it and interested in doing it. So I think that, you know, it speaks to the individual desires of Principal Sinclair and, and also the desire of, of Ms. Delgado, who is here tonight and ready to roll as, as the new principal of Ocean View. So I think we have to give, we have to listen to th these individuals and we have to respect their feelings and their opinions and we need, we need to move on. Thank you. I'm, I think my headphones working. Um, are there any other board comments before we go to public comment? We will also have a, a brief opportunity before we need to vote after we come back from the public. All right, um, if I can get the timer. One moment, I'm working on it. I have too many screens open, sorry. There we go. There we go. Great, thank you. Uh, starting with uh, Dina. Good evening. I'm here to speak on behalf of Ocean View teachers regarding the decision to reassign and remove Michelle Sinclair as our school principal. First of all, we do not understand why an unfilled position in the district warrants reassigning our capable, respected, and effective administrator during this school year. This will have an immediate and devastating effect on Ocean View, which has the most vulnerable student population. Ocean View is a community with many unique needs. We have a very diverse student population. We are the only Title I elementary school in Albany. We have the greatest number of students scoring at risk on FastBridge. We have newcomers to English, and currently we have 10 TK and kindergarten classes on our campus. Our parents work long hours, our Cal students, international making our campus full of students and families who need stability and consistency, not more disruption. The 641 students at Ocean View deserve continuity with a principal this school year. Michelle Sinclair has that direct experience, knows our community because she was a teacher for five years at Ocean View. She lives in our community and understands us. Last year, she built routines, procedures, and student support, and it's critical that she continue her work this second year instead of starting over with a new administrator. This continuity and support is imperative for our student success. Lastly, removing a principal at the start of the school year is devastating to our teachers. Many of us were in tears after hearing about this. Um, we really need that stability in a leader and, and in our leadership of our school. Michelle reunified us after two years on split campuses, held us together during COVID and supported our students with social emotional needs. As teachers, we're reaching out to the board to reconsider this hasty decision. We care too much about our students and our school to remain silent. To be clear, what we're asking for is we wanna request that Michelle Sinclair be permitted to fulfill her current assignment for the current school year. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Mary. Good evening, board. Thank you for taking my call. I'm Mary Castillo McIntyre. Um, I have a few questions uh, regarding the position of um, director of uh, development. Um, so Dr. Wells reminded the board and the community that uh, last year AUSD adopted, at least in principle, although it is yet to, to implement uh, universal design for learning and multi-tiered system of support. Uh, and I, I don't think I uh, misheard or, or didn't hear correctly, but I, I don't recall hearing Ms. Sinclair uh, touch upon having any experience, uh, and more importantly, any success stories implementing universal design for learning and uh, MTSS. So if uh, uh, I may, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Sinclair uh, how she plans to, um, to, if she doesn't have the experience, how she plans on uh, uh, getting up to speed on that, and then implement it. And then uh, also because uh, as uh, Trustee Duron um, mentioned, it's always a team effort. How are Assistant Superintendent and Shin, Director of Special Education, uh, Brian Biggs, and uh, the new Executive Director of Student Services, Deb Brill, 
going to support uh, um, Michelle Sinclair so that uh, she is successful in implementing the adopted uh, universal uh, design for learning and multi-tier systems of support. How are they going to support the principals and how are they going to get uh, the Albany Teachers Association uh, to come on board and uh, have a successful implementation of this very crucial, important program that will go a long way uh, towards addressing the very issues that uh, both uh, Dr. Wells and uh, Trustee Das uh, have been talking about uh, for the last uh, uh, 10 minutes or so. Thank you. Great, thank you. I'm gonna finish public comment and then ask for staff response. President, President Hinckley, uh, I yeah. am so sorry. I, um, I have to leave our meeting and I really apologize to our community about this. I am so, so sorry. Um, my dad passed away earlier this year and my poor mom is alone and now her dog is passing away. So I have to leave this meeting and go and support my mom. I know this is an incredibly important decision in our community and I feel absolutely horrible leaving in the middle of this. Um, I'm really, really, really sorry, but I have to make this decision. Tru so Tru I apologize. Yeah. Trustee Davidson, it's all, it's all good. Family first, uh, we'll keep you in our prayers. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Family first, go for it. All right, uh, when it rains, it pours. All right, uh, back to public comment, um, going to Beth. Hi, my name is Beth Dunn. I'm a second grade teacher at Ocean View. I've been teaching at Ocean View for 17 years. Our three daughters attended Ocean View and graduated from Albany schools. So you might say I'm a bit passionate about our Ocean View community. And that's why I'm speaking to you tonight about please reconsidering this last minute change and allowing Michelle Sinclair to remain our Ocean View principal for the remainder of the school year. Michelle is an integral member of our community. She taught at Ocean View for five years. Her kids attended. Albany schools, she gets us. She's She connects with our parents and students. And yes, um, uh, trustee, uh, vice president Duran, you know, one member is not, does not make the school. We are a community and she's an integral part of it. And, and the problem is um, all systems are only as strong as their supports. And right now, when our supports have just begin, begun to stop wobbling and to solidify, the rug's being pulled out from under us and you're taking our principal away from us. Um, you know, like, like the other elementary schools, Ocean View's been through the COVID ringer, but unlike the other schools, we're in a very different situation. We just formed a PTA. We don't have a school secretary, and now you're asking us to change principles. Um, it, it's a lot to ask for us. So please don't remove the one reliable, stable support system our school has. We understand that she's highly capable and desirable. Of course she is. But please stop giving Ocean View students and staff such low priority. Please prioritize us and our principal's leadership and allow us to keep Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I don't see any further public comment. If you could remove the timer. All right. I will follow up with Trustee Davidson as well. I know everyone everyone knows she means when she says she feels terrible about leaving. So um, we will be thinking about her and her mom. Um, so I just wanted to, to, I guess, weigh in on this a little bit. And then I think maybe we're uh, about ready to move toward a discussion of action. Um, you know, my kids both went to Ocean View. I definitely feel uh, as a very real thing, the sense that Ocean View often gets, you know, the short shrift. I think the district has made an effort over the last you know, few years to really try to change that dynamic, but it's a, you know, that's a hard, a hard pattern to shift. And so I really feel the sense that the teachers and parents are raising of, you know, is this happening because our school is 
is always the last to get resources or whatever it may be. So I just want to um, acknowledge that sense that a lot of parents and uh, and teachers are beginning from. Um, you know, I started my term with us debating where to put Ocean View <laughs> students during construction, and there a lot of those emotions came out. So I honor that. Um, I also want to say that the board has never not approved a staffing appointment brought forward by the superintendent. And the reason for that is that it's the superintendent's prerogative to make hiring decisions. The board did not, was not involved in any of this. And I say that not to deflect our responsibility, but to emphasize that um, for the board to overreach and make uh, essentially overrule the superintendent's personnel decisions uh, would be a significant um, shift in my mind in terms of the relationship between the board and the superintendent. Um, I also would just really want to thank Principal Sinclair for the incredible work he did over the year um, to get Ocean View feeling better about the space they were in. And I think it also illustrates that, you know, a great principal can do a great job in a very short amount of time. And I really appreciate, uh, you know, the the message that you've given us, Ms. Delgado, about what you envision doing for the district and the, the experience that you bring. Um, I, I do want to just, and I also want to acknowledge that we have a, a principal in our district who is interested in moving up into administration. And so, um, meaning Ms. Sinclair wants to take on a responsibility at the district office level. Um, so I really want to thank you for being willing to take that on and, and and you know, for the board to essentially um, not approve something like that would be um, not honoring the commitment that we make to our staff to give them opportunities for advancement. Um, so just with that all said, I do hope that the concerns that people are raising about the transition and the need for a strong transition and supports for Ocean View, whether it's the, you know, a secretary or other supports that they're also feeling are lacking that that we can figure out how to make sure those are addressed uh, during during the transition um, and figure out how to support support Ms. Delgado as she moves into that role. Um, so that's just my little blurb. But I also realized I forgot, uh, partly because of Trustee Davidson's departure, I forgot that I said I would ask for staff to respond to the the questions raised about just what's What's the plan for using the professional development TSA to support UDL and MTSS? And um, uh, maybe not the whole question, but the beginning part of the caller's question, if you could respond to that, Superintendent Wells or, or Principal Sinclair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me um, give a, a, some a more context to the transition and get it, then get into the question. One is that, um, the board needs to know the community and the staff is that we're not going to do any abrupt move. Both um, Principal um, St. Clair and um, Principal Anna Degada will be working together for a period of time at Ocean View. And so we, we um, committed to do that so that there would be a smooth handoff and um, transition. In addition to that, the main one of the main support um, mechanism um, from the position of deaf, deaf, um, professional development would be to continue to support um, Ocean View, as we give Ocean View more attention uh, based on equity and based on the needs. I wanted to be clear about that. As it go for um, um, the question um, from the speaker earlier, who asked, um, how are we going to um, address um, MTSS and UDL and um, the assistant superintendent and executive director um, of the district office? It's going to be a collaborative, um, inclusive effort. And that also includes our special ed department and personnel. And so as we grapple um, with the process and adhere to a principle, which is the top principle um, practice that we're adopting in this MTSS and UDL and using data to um, engage in co collective efficacy, which is simply saying um, teacher collaborative teams um, looking at data, adhere to data protocol and responding to data um, like we never done before for each and every child. And that takes some grappling. Um, and it depends on what the data tell us for each and every kid. And so it's gonna be a, a team approach that's, you heard me say a, a, a lot of times, that's inclusive, collaborative, 
and transparent, utilizing the uh, most effective approach in all of our research um, as determined by um, our own practice and study and our chief researcher in the country, John Hattie. And we call it the collective um, efficacy. And that's the process we will be using, um, um, overseen and facilitated by um, Michelle St. Clair and the rest of us, um, including myself, who will, will be on the team. Great, thank you. And now um, back to board comments. And then we have about five minutes, I think, left on this item. So hoping to move uh, toward an action. Go ahead, Trustee Das. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, some good points, some good points were made. Um, I don't know if, uh, I mean, in the interest of what we were saying that we uh, were kind of restructuring the meetings a little bit to kind of be, you know, more, you know, centered on, you know, getting things of that nature. And then to say that we have an item um that we kind of already know the answer to seems a little uh like we spent more time on it than we needed to because everybody knows how how it's gonna go because it's always kind of went that way but then at the same time since the superintendent is kind of in charge of personnel and the board isn't going to really override that this could have been presented in a little bit of a, a different way so that it doesn't come across as the board is trying to um you know not have confidence in the superintendent and the decisions uh, that he's making this could have been you know presented in a different way right because it comes across as like oh well you don't want um principal uh, delgado to be successful and that's not true it's just it was an opportunity to uh, point out you know saying the information uh and point out the, the situations that we're in and, and and it was an opportunity to do that and whenever i have an opportunity to do that I think it's important to keep, you know, top of mind as we continue these conversations. But um, as we kind of <clears throat> transition into the next step and and and, um, and and pass this, so that everybody can kind of move on, um, I will say that uh, I think that it's really nice for somebody to come, and and not that they had to do it, but to come and speak passionately about the job and about how well they feel they're gonna do in the job. It feels you know, good that, that somebody, you know, willing, willing to do that. And the superintendent willing to you know, share the transparency with the community to say, hey, this is why I'm doing this and let's have a discussion. Um, and I think that all that's great. I think to minimize that by saying, hey, we're just gonna vote yes anyway, is kind of rude. Um, and I kind of think it takes away from all the time that everybody spent, um, that they took the time to be here. And if we were just going to vote yes anyway, then they didn't have to come. They could have went and did something else. So I think that not to minimize people's time because people's time is valuable, um, that we shouldn't do that. Um, and that, you know, uh, there's a different way to go about it to say, hey, we have full confidence in the superintendent. So we're going to support him and his decisions. I think there's just a way to go about it other than just saying, ah, we're going to vote yes anyway. So who cares? Um, I will end with. I think that uh, there were a lot of good points that were brought up, and I hope that uh, those are taken the right way. And I hope that we can use that uh, to move forward and help kids uh, be successful. And I wish everybody luck in their new roles. Thank you, Trustee Boyd. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, say a, a couple things. Um, we wanted to appreciate. Um, Principal Sinclair and Ms. Delgado um, coming to the meetings and, and presenting with uh, with passion and excitement and enthusiasm um, about the, the roles that you're being considered um, to be placed in and also appreciate the members of the community, uh, teacher, staff, uh, parents, uh, family members, et cetera, who, um, who communicated with us and shared uh, in, in uh, various um, instances, you know, quite personal details about why this this decision is important to you and um, and just want to reiterate that those concerns are important. Um, I also want to note and I, I haven't been a, an Ocean View parent, but I, I very much appreciate 
um, and honor and acknowledge the the concerns that have been raised um, before now uh, about you know asking questions. Would this be happening if it's a different elementary school? And regardless of whether where you come out on that, it is important to ask the question in a public space and to acknowledge um, issues that that people have identified and, and that we continue to to grapple with and, and hopefully improve. So I just want to appreciate um, and acknowledge the importance of this process and um, having a space to be public with the community and share the fact that, you know, if, when faced with a difficult decision and kind of being made to scramble in a last minute way, what the thinking was, what the holes are that are, you know, that uh, Superintendent Wells and, and his cabinet are trying to fill and that's been considered and how to do that. Um, I just want to honor that process, appreciate the honesty and the transparency, um, recognize that all decisions and processes don't always happen in the, in the way that you would, you know, kind of ordain them to happen. Sometimes you have to react. Um, and, and I also want to respect and acknowledge the importance of, of honoring what our superintendent's role is and, and what the, uh, the board's role is and, um, and the importance of, of precedent and understanding what those, um, those various roles are, what the spaces are that are controlled by those, those two different bodies. Um, the one thing that I would suggest that I would appreciate is, uh, I, I think it would be a great, I appreciate that sort of TBD and the um, willingness and, um, and like not something that, you know, Dr. Wells needed to be sort of strong armed into. We came into the meeting saying this is a TBD, this is something that is flexible, that we are looking to be, you know, thoughtful and attentive and how this is being implemented and how supports are being kept in place. And I think, you know, how the transition is as, as successful as possible. And I think it would be helpful to have some sort of a like a staff report or some sort of a reporting that that happens uh, either perhaps before the actual transition takes place um, or, you know, maybe before it, or maybe, you know, kind of um, shortly after or just, you know, continuing to, to really be aware of the fact that this is an important occurrence that is taking place and something that we should continue to, um, to just be knowledgeable about as, as a community um, and uh, intentional about making sure it is a success and, and recognizing the challenges there. And then also with the, um, uh, with Principal Sinclair um, potentially stepping into this um, professional development role and appreciating the, the comment that was, you know, the question that was raised about, you know, the implementation of UDL and MTSS. And, you know, I do want to acknowledge that there was kind of a plan and a consideration of, of you know, who was going to be in that position and, and uh, certainly a recognition in the district of how important it is to make sure that that is something that is implemented um, in, in the strongest uh, way possible. And I would appreciate us being able as a community to sort of see how that's going as well. And, and you know, just be um, knowledgeable about, you know, this is not a decision, however it's decided, that's made now, and then no one else has, you know, sort of any knowledge about what's happening unless your boots on the ground. I would hope that this is something that we could continue to be, you know, really intentional about having um, updates in board meetings and, and kind of being able to, um, to, to communicate as a community and, um, and make sure that we can all together um, make these series of transitions as positive as possible. Great, thank you. I know that you're all all of those ideas and recommendations are being absorbed. <laughs> I can see on the superintendent's face. Um, so I, I also just thank you for yeah you know, all the letters and and participation that we got. Um, many of them from my children's former teachers. So it's especially a, a bit wrenching to read some of them. Um, but I'm uh, again feeling very hopeful that we're going to be hearing more about how this transition goes and supporting that community um, as well as we can. All right, so I am sensing that I'm not seeing any other hands. Um, is there a motion or any further discussion? I'd like to make a motion. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question, oh, sorry, just, Vice President uh, Vice Durant? President Durant. No, I was gonna make a motion, no problem. You go. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead, Vice President, you make the motion and I'll second, go for it. Okay, let's see if we're in agreement. 
I I move that we approve these two positions uh, to go forward. I second. I'm just gonna restate just so for the record. Um, so this is a status change for Director of Pre Professional Development, Michelle Sinclair and Principal of Ocean View Elementary, Anna Delgado. Can we get a, a roll call? Yes, Student Trustee Garcia Bustamante. Yes. Student Trustee Dana. Yes. Vice President Duran. Yes. President Hinckley. Yes. Trustee Boyd. Yes. Uh, Trustee Davidson is absent. Trustee Doss. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Th thank you. The motion uh, passes unanimously with one absence. Um, great. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Principal Sinclair, Principal Delgado, and we really look forward to hearing more about everything you do in our district. Um, and thank you again to the, the members of the public that came and attended and weighed in. All right, we move to item 11B, the provisional internship permit. Thank Tell you. me if I'm wrong once again. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have, have no paper. <laughs> Let me share my screen. Um, the provisional in, um, internship permit. Sorry, it's getting late. <laughs> I gotta find my words again. So this item, this is um, one of these, it's sort of like an, an emergency permit um, uh, credential that allows a teacher who hasn't yet completed a full program um, to serve in a teaching position. Um, so um, this one is for one of our longtime substitute teachers, Fiona Ray. Um, she's worked for us as a substitute teacher and she's even done some sort of like long-term subbing for folks who are on a leave. Um, and I think it was because of that, you know, she was sort of pressure testing if this is what she wanted to do. And she has enrolled in a credential program, but there are certain um, requirements that you have to meet uh, before you can be eligible for an actual intern credential. Um, and so she's still working on those requirements. So then this is sort of the, the thing before an intern credential. This is a provisional intern permit. Um, we call it a PIP. And so um, with the board approval, we will submit um, the recommendation for this PIP to the um, Commission on Teacher Credentialing, and that will allow her to be what we call fully credentialed or appropriately credentialed um, for the classroom. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions or a motion? Uh, are you able to bring up, bring back the, um, so that uh, I can uh, make a motion? Um, I move that we approve the uh, provisional uh, internship uh, permit. Second. Student trustee Garcia Bustamante. Excuse me. Yes. Student trustee Dana. Yes. President Hinckley. Yes. Trustee Boyd. Yes. Uh, Trustee Davidson is absent. Trustee Doss? Yes. Vice President Theron? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The provisional internship permit passes unanimously with one absence. And we move to item 11C, amendment to the agreement for design build services for Marin Elementary School. Uh, for this one, design bill, um, I'll turn it over to our CBO, who I think will um, hand it over to um, Mr. Jaffe, um, but I'm going to hand the baton to you, CBO Kim. Thank you, Superintendent Wares. Good evening, um, board president and board um, and community. See, so this item um, is for the design bill for Marine. This amendment number six is to add a scope of the work. 
So the work included in this amendment was budgeted for and will draw on the um, project contingencies. In other words, this project is expected to be completed within the budget, and this is a normal part of the process of the construction. Okay. The items are organized into two categories, design enhancement and unforeseen conditions. This design enhancement is, again, the normal part of the construction. Um, it's a site requested during the construction as we go um, on with the project and we see, oh, we need this extra um, cabinet, we need this extra outlet, so um, so many things that we'll have to add in the scope of the work. Okay. And the other items are the unforeseen conditions, which is also uh, we had um, all these unforeseen, unforeseen conditions in other constructions at um, Ocean View and um, uh, middle school and high school. So this is also one of the part of the regular construction process. So the total amendment here, the thank you machine is a million twenty two thousand five hundred twenty seven point ninety one. Okay, and this will be um, from the bond fund. So this item is for the board to approve this amendment number six to for the agreement for the design based service for Marine Elementary School. Great, thank you. Any questions from the board? Or would someone like to make a motion on this very long title? Yes, I would like to make a motion. Uh, I move that we approve the item amendment number six to agreement for design bill of services for the Moran Elementary Rebuild Project by and between Albany Unified School District and Alton Construction Inc. Design Bill Contract. Uh, I'll second Prepared that. By oh, our wonderful CBO, Jackie. That was a second. <laughs> yeah, from Trustee Dana. Okay, thank you. Student Trustee Garcia Bustamante? Yes. Uh, student Trustee Dana? Yes. Trustee Boyd? Yes. Trustee Davidson is marked absent. Trustee Doss? Yes. Vice President Duron? Yes. And President Hinckley? Yes. The item amendment number six passes unanimously with one absence. And we move to item 11B, the school site assignments for the Board of Education for the 22-23 school year. Um, so we have three, we only have two board members who are gonna be here for the entire school year and one of them is no longer at the meeting. <laughs> Um, so I'm trying to piece together what the best strategy is uh, for moving forward. So maybe you could just, Ms. Shen, bring up the list of assignments. So every August, we revisit the question of both school site assignments and committee assignments for the board members, including student board members. Um, in years where there's a, an election scheduled, that means that it's possible that some of these assign that we will also, the board will also have to do this again in January. Um, this year for the current board, three members are not running for re-election, which means that you will, this will be a majority new board starting in January. So in some years, the we might keep the site assignments the same just to minimize the amount of transition during the year, but I think it would be important to give the uh, continuing board members the opportunity to weigh in on that. But again, half of them <laughs> had to leave the meeting, unfortunately. Um, so maybe Trustee Boyd, we could see what your, if your preference is to stick with the school that you have for the fall and revisit in January, or if you were coming in with a desire to switch sites um, so that you could be at the same site for the entire year. I would love to stay at Marin if possible. Okay. 
And I'm also happy to, uh, at the last, um, since we have, you know, one more site than, uh, than person, um, Trustee Davidson ended up uh, being responsible for Albany Children's Center. I don't know how we want to do this considering that she's not able to be here anymore, but I would also be mm -hmm. happy to take that um, on as an additional site uh, at this point. I think at the time we kind of thought about potentially um, switching off on that, but I defer to whatever the right process is here or what Trustee Dane is going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please resolve this for us. <laughs> I was um, actually going to ask, you said including student board members, so I was wondering, do we get a site? Is that something? So, yeah, yeah, if those words came out of my mouth and then this sheet came up, I realized yeah. those two things didn't go together. So student board members do sit on committees, which is the next item. We have not assigned board members to sites in the in the past you know, you are obviously situated at the high school, but you also have a responsibility to represent all of the students. So I think it's a different role. Yeah. We don't assign students I, to specific I just wanted sites. To yeah. Clarify, because <laughs> I yeah. Thank you for asking. I heard that, um, and I was like, oh, I'm I'm not. Sure. Yeah, and there are only two of you, right? So then, as sites would have different numbers of people, and it would it would be, um, it would be. N nonsensical. Um, all right, so I'm going to make a proposal that we keep the assignments that we have now, but replace Trustee Davidson with Trustee Boyd at the Albany Children's Center. If for some reason, you know, that needs to be changed in back in January, then then you all can discuss that in January. Um, but I think that rather than the rest of us taking on a site for half a year and then that having to start over again. Um, I, I think it would be better for us to continue with the sites that we have. So that's my proposal. Um, I guess I can make that as a motion that we move all the assignments over with the exception of Albany Children's Center, which would be taken by Trustee Boyd. I second that. I'm sorry, can, can you give me just one moment to write this down? <laughs> yes. For the minutes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And I will also just restate yeah. something else we talked about at our workshop last week, which is the responsibilities for what the board member does at the site, which is um, board members are should be attending PTA meetings and site council meetings and um, using those kinds of opportunities to stay informed about the activities at the site. And I'm just stating that it's in our governance handbook, but just to remind folks and to fill the time until um, until Julie's ready to take role. Okay, I'm ready. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Thank you for putting that up. Yeah, sure. Uh, student Trustee Garcia Bustamante. Yes. Student Trustee Dana. Yes. Um, Trustee Doss. Yes. Vice President Duran? Yes. President Hinckley? Yes. Trustee Boyd? Yes. And for the record, Trustee Davidson is absent. Great, thank you. Thank you. So the school site assignments um, are adopted unanimously with one absence. And our last review and action item is the committee assignments for the 22-23 school year. Can we um, see the other? All right, so just to remind everyone what our committees are, there's the two by two by two, which is uh, by office, so we don't need to approve appointments there. 
there's the board policy committee, the budget advisory committee, the, let me read from the list. Um, there's the career technical education committee, the environmental action plan committee, the fundraising advisory committee, special education advisory committee, student achievement committee and the wellness committee. And because student board members are not subject to the Brown Act, we are allowed to have as many student board members on committees. Um, regular board members, we can only have two members on each committee. So uh, trust Vice President Duran, did you wanna make a suggestion or proposal? Mm. I, I have a suggestion. And um, first, I, I had just wanted to clarify that I was not on the uh, Marin um, Design Build Committee. I had originally, uh, like a couple of years ago, and then Trustee Doss took it over last year. So um, just wanted to clarify that. That was Trustee Doss. Um, and then, I wanted to make a suggestion recommendation. We've had this conversation before. Um, I have brought it up at a previous meeting that uh, I would like to propose that we add LCAP as a committee. We used to have it um, a year ago and then it, it uh, got, um, it, it was combined with the student achievement committee. Um, and, I know in, in our previous discussion, the superintendent had said that, no, that it had come up from the Student Ach Achievement Committee Task Force, that they were, it was one of its recommendations. And I went back and looked, and there are four recommendations, but not one of them had to do with LCAP. Uh, the LCAP uh, merger with the Student Achievement Committee came from the suggestion by uh, Marie Williams, who was the previous assistant superintendent. Um, so I, and the reason why I would really like it to be a separate committee is because there is so much work, first of all, that the student achievement uh, committee has to do. And it really needs to be very focused on just those students that we were talking about that the uh, superintendent so eloquently talked about tonight. It, that's really the focus of the Student Achievement Committee. And then the LCAP is a committee that does like everything else, everything from action plans to looking at resources and how to spend those resources. Uh, when we attempted to do it this year under the Student Achievement Committee, it was next to impossible. It ended up being um, an hour or two maximum of the whole year's conversation. So that's why I highly recommend that the LCAP become its own independent uh, committee so that uh, truly all the needs of the district can be served um, in a separate committee. So that sounds like an important discussion. I know we've started it at different times, but we can't use this item to create new committees or divide committees up. So that would need to, maybe you can bring this up again at the end of the meeting when we talk about future agenda items. Great, thank you. All right, so once again, I'm gonna give Trustee Boyd the opportunity to first decide what committees you would like to work on for the whole year. I think for committees in particular, focusing for the full school year would be helpful. So. Um, you are, this past year, you were on the wellness committee and the special education committee, the fundraising, which I think, I believe didn't meet last year, but hopes to meet twice this year. And yeah, those were the committees you were on this year. Do you have uh, preferences for or last year rather, for where you'd like to serve this coming year? Um, I, mean, I didn't realize I was gonna have this position. Sorry to put a, you on the spot. But. That's great importance. <laughs> um, I, uh, I would love to, um, to stay on the special education committee. Um, I would also love to serve on the student achievement committee if uh, possible. Um, I don't know how it works out numbers wise. I'm happy to participate on the wellness committee uh, again, if that 
if that makes sense or, you know, I don't know how it all shakes out numbers wise. Oh, and the fundraising advisory committee, it just, it didn't meet this past year. So I don't have a, a leaning one way or the other on, on that one. Uh, in terms in terms of the numbers, uh, there's only there can only be uh, two board members on each one. Obviously, you have the first priority because you're going to still be on the board uh, after I'm gone. So um, if Trustee Vice President Duran would like to continue serving on that committee, then I uh, will remove myself. If you didn't plan on serving on that committee, then I'll then I'll serve, serve on it. But I will leave. Leave it up to you, uh, Vice President Brock. Thank you so much, uh, Trustee Doss. I, I love the committee and I would actually like to continue working on it until December. Great. So because Trustee Davidson is not here. Um, I don't want to, I think we're going to have to come back and finish these assignments later anyway. Um, but I want to make sure we have the assignments we can do in order to get the committees to um, be able to move forward. So I'd like she, to continue with the special education if possible. And we're okay. I'd like to continue with the budget committee for the fall and the environmental action committee. So that leaves us with, and we can leave some of these open because I want to give Trustee Davidson the opportunity to choose the committee she wants to do for the year. Um, but that leaves us with no appointments yet on board policy. Or, that's where I, um, that, okay, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, uh, that's where I wanted to jump in. Um, yes, I'm interested in doing the board policy committee again. Um, and also the wellness committee as well. Uh, I'm happy to do the uh, budget advisory, but you can put a question mark because I wanna make sure to leave it open for uh, Trustee Davidson if there's something that she wants to move into. Okay, um, students, do you, we talked a little bit last week about committee membership for students. This is not something you should feel compelled to take on. Um, if you don't, if you don't want to be a sitting member, you like members of the public have the opportunity to attend meetings as well. And our goal this year is to make these meetings more accessible to people who want to attend but don't have the time to join. Um, but that said, are there committees that you would like to be a member of, either Trustee Dana, ones you were on last year, or new ones? Yeah, um, I'd like to join the policy committee and the uh, budget advisory committee, if possible. <laughs> And, then, and trustee, 
Oh, yeah, go ahead. Maybe maybe wellness committee, but I have to check my schedule for that to see if I have the time to do that again. And Trustee Garcia Bustamante. Um, I would be interested in joining the student achievement and career technical education and the fundraising advisory committee. You sure you don't want to join the committee with me and uh, student uh, trustee Oz? It's going to be a lot of fun. Sky's the limit. <laughs> Not when you're a junior in high school. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Responsibilities. Way to stay on top of it. I'm sorry, but the, the, the dad in me is, uh, I want the students to be very careful at not overextending yourself regarding your studies. I really appreciate the zeal, but um, it's okay when you get up to your eyebrow to let a committee or two go. And so um, give it some more thought because what I want you, don't want you to do is sacrifice your grades and um, your schooling um, with all these extra activities. And I just felt the dad and me felt compelled to share that with you too. I really appreciate it. Um, Dr. Wells will definitely give it some thought. That's that's why I put the maybe there. I did see it on the agenda and I thought about it for the past three days, but I'm still working out my volleyball schedule and other commitments. So I'm just puzzle piecing everything together. We'll see. <laughs> All right, you can also put my name down for this, the CTE committee. Even if Trustee Davidson wants to join, there would be, be a room. All right, I think this is enough to get the committees staffed um, for their first meetings before we uh, bring it back with Trustee Davidson's assignments. Um, can we, it's a little hard to see the whole thing, but I think I, I think we've got most of the bases covered and have at least one board member on every committee. All right. Can I get a motion to approve this set of appointments and then we'll bring it back? Um, I think we, in the past, we've brought it back and put it on consent with the board. I feel like this happened once before um, with the board member that was missing on that night. So are we looking for a motion to approve this pending yeah. further approval on a consent? No, just approving this, approving this set of assignments. The, the consent would just be adding Trustee Davidson into the places where she wants to be added. Thank you. Uh, I move that we approve this set of committee assignments. I'll second that. Okay, student trustee Garcia Bustamante. Yes. Student trustee Dana. Yes. Um, excuse me. Vice President Duran. Yes. Trust, uh, President Hinckley. Yes. Trustee Boyd. Yes. Um, trustee Doss. Yes. And Trustee Davidson is absent. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. This set of committee assignments for 2022-23 is approved unanimously with one absence. And I will follow up with Trustee Davidson to get her requests. And that is the end of our action items. So future agenda items. We have a workshop next Wednesday um, to set goals and objectives for the year. And then our next regular board meeting is August 30th. 
uh, Trustee Doss. Um, yeah, I wanted to um, take a closer look at the um, application processes throughout the district. Um, so there's certain, you know, um, whether it's the interdistrict transfer application or the before and after school uh, program application uh, or um, ACC application um, to go you know, there. You know, all these, these different applications, uh, I wanted to, you know, kind of take a look at the processes. Uh, sometimes they can be a little discouraging. And I think that sometimes uh, people don't participate or take full advantage of everything the district has to offer because the application process can be either intimidating or discouraging. So I'd like to take a closer look and see if we can't revamp it. All right. Uh, Vice President Duran. Um, two items. Uh, the first is the LCAP that I mentioned already, um, a discussion with the board regarding the LCAP as a possible uh, committee in and of itself, standalone. And the second is I wanted to um, add marine playground design uh, as, as a um, a discussion as well. And because, and, and we had talked about, well, what objectives uh, are we speaking about with each of these um, um, agenda items? And in the case of the Marin Playground Design, the strategic objectives are the whole child and having a green yard, an environmental friendly yard for our students, and also a go through, which is communicate and lead together. And because I've been concerned that it's been really hard for the community to really see what the playground um, plan is for Marin. And the last time that I remember seeing anything and I wrote it down, I mean, I had to go back till February of 2021 uh, when we had a discussion about, uh, they requested a, a whole change. Um, and that was the last time we had seen a plan. And my understanding is that it was going to be posted somewhere uh, but I haven't seen it. I haven't found it anywhere. And I know today uh, in asking about it, I was told that uh, the plan is going to go forward as it was presented at that time as agreed to by the design committee. Uh, but just like tonight, the board had to do uh, relooks and revisit certain parts of the contract in terms of enhancement or adding scope to the work. Similarly, I think the board needs to look at uh, the Marin playground uh, in addition to, because my understanding, and I may be wrong, is, is that Marin was gonna have 6,000 square feet of asphalt. Given the heat that we ha have had these days um, and how hot it has been is that there is gonna be no shade provided at that school for the students if we go ahead with the plan that was proposed in February of 2021. And if that's no longer the plan, then, then I'm sure everybody in the community would like to look at it, me included, and, and have an opportunity to have a fuller discussion about how we provide a uh, environmentally friendly, to use the superintendent's words, a schoolyard for, for all our students at Marin in this case. All right. Any other future agenda items? I did hear that the Student Advocacy Committee will be wanting to present. I remember that. <laughs> was there anything else you wanted to raise? No, I was about to say that. And then I tried to find the button for the hand raise. And then you said it for me. So that's for Yeah, I've been working on my ESP over the summer. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Then I think we're done. Uh, thank you everyone for a productive meeting and congratulations on the first week of school. And we are adjourned. See you next Wednesday. <laughs>